one of the less known FPS games of the 90s was a game called Power Slave or Exhumed, depending on what part of the world you lived in. This was one of the so-called Doom clones of the 1990s and there were two versions of the game going around at the time, both of which were vastly different. The PC version was a far simpler game, being a little more than a couple dozen levels of the standard key hunting mechanic with a very unique Egyptian backdrop. On the consoles however we got a highly superior version, developed for the Sega Saturn and eventually the PlayStation. Now this version was more akin to Hexen than Doom, where you went back and forth across different maps, collecting upgrades in the form of ancient artifacts, which gave you new abilities. A pair of sandals allowed you to jump higher for instance, and a feather allowed you to levitate, among many others. With the new abilities, you could go back to the older levels and progress through areas previously out of reach. Now compared to the PC version where all you had to worry about was what key you were going to find next, there's easily more on offer here, and the console version is the definitive version hands down. Both games were developed by Lobotomy Software and they share story similarities and both use the same weapon and enemy sprites, but they are, as I said, vastly different. Now we've got this sort of remaster or port, I don't really know what to call it, in the form of Power Slave EX. Some very smart chap has taken the Sega, Saturn and PlayStation version and got it running near flawlessly on modern systems, allowing for high resolutions and a more traditional mouse and keyboard setup. And you know what? It's a damn good port. Now I did review both of these games a while ago, both the PC and console version of Power Slave, but let me take a moment to talk about the console version a bit more, as I glossed over it a bit in my original video, and that is after all what this port is all about. So, this is a pretty original game regardless of the platform. You're a special forces soldier stuck in the ancient Egyptian city of Karnak, where you're soon guided by the spirit of King Ramses as he assists you in stopping an evil alien race known as the Kilmart. Now, my eternal sleep has been broken by a savage race of creatures known as the Kilmot. You explore roughly two dozen different stages, accessing them through a map screen as you collect the six artifacts to aid you in your journey, which are then used to unlock the last area in the game. It's still very much key hunting in a sense, but the layouts to each level is very challenging and not always straightforward, and it makes the PC version seem elementary by comparison. Your weapons are initially more militaristic armaments, suiting your character's background as a soldier, so you've got a revolver and a machete before you get your hands on an M60 machine gun, which continues being useful for the entire game. <laughs> Lastly, you get a flamethrower which burns through enemies as fast as it does its fuel supply. The rest of the weapons are really cool. There's a type of grenade called an Amon Bomb, which is highly damaging and has a huge radius of effect. Then you've got a heat-seeking rocket launcher of sorts called a Cobra Staff. The sacred manacle fires out slow-moving lightning bolts, jibbing enemies instantly, and last but not least you've got the Ring of Ra, which fires out dozens of smaller fireballs that bounce around until they come into contact with an enemy. I'd say this is probably the best weapon in the game for close quarters fighting, and it has a hell of an ammo count letting you really go wild. Enemies follow a similar ancient Egyptian theme, so you're up against sand scorpions, mummies, and guys with Anubis heads that shoot fireballs. The boss fights are just larger, stronger enemy types in a sense that can take a lot more damage before going down. Overall, the shooting is really enjoyable thanks to highly detailed sprites, animations, and crisp sound effects. When enemies die, they literally explode, throwing their body parts in all directions. It's got the kind of sprite art that modern day indie developers can only dream of. It's just a great looking and sounding game, and the soundtrack in particular is awesome. It's hands down got some of the greatest music in any single shooting game. But I'm not here to blow smoke up your ass, and I'm guessing the majority of people watching this video aren't the folks who played this game back in the day, which is fine. So let me say what I do not like about this game for those wondering whether or not this is worth their time. I should mention these complaints don't necessarily apply to the port itself, which by and large is flawless. Aside from a few weapon sprite glitches, certain sprites weren't made with a widescreen ratio in mind, so expect to see weapons cut off at the edges, but all things considered, this gets top marks. What is worth mentioning is that Power Slave is often a bullshit hard game. The first few areas aren't too tricky, but about five or six levels in, there's a huge difficulty spike that remains for the rest of the game. Enemies can deal out some serious damage in a very short time, and most of the enemy types are resilient to your attacks and can take quite a beating. Learning their attack patterns and just staying mobile is really the safest way to deal with them, but that's not where the real challenge comes from. The challenge comes from the frequent and often lengthy platforming sections which are just sadistically difficult and not at all times enjoyable. 
Now keep in mind this was a game designed for a PlayStation control, a PlayStation 1 controller of all things and you can imagine how brutal it was to gamers when it first came out. Now playing it even with a mouse and keyboard it's still very tricky stuff. Quite often you're jumping from moving platform to moving platform, making leaps that require the near maximum length you're able to reach from a jump, along with avoiding fireballs or enemies at the same time. Jumps are often over lava or other hazards that can kill you instantly if not just reset the whole jumping sequence. It's often very frustrating and it kind of leads me into my other complaint about this game which is the lack of save points per level. You're expected to finish the levels in a single playthrough, some of which might take you 10 to 15 minutes to get through. Now in all fairness you can't knock this kind of mechanic, as it was pretty standard back then but I'd hope they would add a quick save feature into this port at some stage. Having to replay 10 minute levels over and over because you missed time to jump or miscalculated something else relating to the platforming is not very fun, it's just annoying. But even then, dying to enemies is going to happen as well, regardless of how cautious you are, and having to die over and over as you learn the traps and nuances of each level can also be a bit grating. It's a pain in the ass, that's what it is. When you're killed, it's back to the start from scratch. I mean, even Contra lets you start again from where you died. In regards to the original releases, I don't think the lack of quick saves was a design choice, it was a limitation laid down by the console more than anything else. I'd like to hope they have plans of adding this in for future updates because I can see the lack of it potentially turning away a few people. Other issues I had include the way the auto aim system just does whatever the hell it wants to at times. The best example of this is the serpent staff, with the homing projectiles that just fly around willy nilly. But even something as shooting a scorpion with the machine gun can take way more shots than it really should. A few other things that irritated me were issues with the hitboxes, it seems that the air of effect for certain enemy projectiles seems bigger than it should be, now by that I mean you might think you're out of harm's way but you're still hit by something. I'm not sure if this is an issue with the port or if it was the way it was in the original game so I'm not going to dwell on it. But at the end of the day here's all you need to know and that is that this is a fantastic port of one of the finest shooting games on the Sega Saturn and the Playstation. I don't know if I'd outright recommend it to everyone as the core game is very antiquated and I would think that this port would serve more as a nostalgia trip for those who played it back in the day more than it would as an introduction to people looking at trying it for the first time. If you're patient and can stomach the thought of retrying platforming sections over and over along with retrying entire levels after suffering from unforeseen deaths then give Power Slave EX a go.